real place right now it is nearly three o'clock on a thursday and i'm working from home i had a day in the office yesterday and that well and truly wrecked me so today has been a really slow day i've been working from the sofa i chucked this fleece on this morning because i needed to get to a meeting and i had my pajamas on and i've just not sort of really done anything with that since which is fine we have those days it's not something I enjoy really because I feel smelly but sometimes there's just no spoons. I hope you're all okay. I tend to disappear over the winter time. I, I, I know that my seasonal depression is coming but I kind of forget how it manifests and one big way that it manifests is just a complete like withdrawal from society <laughs> and um, that includes like some of my best friends and I'm just a really terrible communicator during this time of year because I don't have I just don't really have very much joy at this time of year anyway the bulbs have started popping off in the garden so I take that to mean that spring's on her way we do live in England and so it could be that spring sort of pokes her head around the door and then runs away for a month and then it snows and then she comes back. The bulbs are bulbing so I will bulb too. So yeah, I thought why not just give it a go, pick up the damn camera and just edit the damn vlog, you know? I really look how I feel. <laughs> One thing that I've realized in managing my chronic fatigue and working from home is that all of the rules that you think exist about the right way to like do your day like they're nonsense and they're made up that's not what you have to do you can have a shower at 3 p.m and that doesn't mean you're lazy that doesn't mean that you haven't worked hard that day that doesn't mean that you have been unproductive even though we're not even really talking or caring about productivity here but you know from like if you're an employee you need to do the work that you've been assigned to do and that you're being paid to do but just because i'm showering at 3 p.m doesn't mean that i've not done those things it just means i'm showering at 3 p.m and that's completely like morally neutral thing it's not like it doesn't mean anything and i've really had to like get that into my little noggin because it's something that takes up a lot of energy. It's feeling like shame for not adhering to what you think is the, the correct standard or the correct way of doing things. It just doesn't matter. It's all made up, it's nonsense. And you can make up new rules or have no rules at all. You can do whatever you want. It's fine. As long as it works for you, it's fine. 
So with that said, I'm gonna get in the shower at 3 p.m. and then have the rest of my afternoon. Today is Ben's birthday um, and we're both off today but we have absolutely no plans. He watched the Super Bowl last night so he is really tired and I'm always really tired so um, we're just going to have a chill day which we both really really need because we've had very busy weekends um, like the last few weeks. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous sunny day out today and I want to go and have a look outside in the garden because the bulbs are really popping off and I want to go and see what's going on and get a bit of sunshine too. So let's have a look.
<laughs> Hello. Hello. slow morning in bed with cloudy i really did not get enough sleep last night so i'm feeling pretty rough but that's okay it's literally mid-feb now but i just feel like i've not really fully been back to normal capacity since like christmas it's just been tricky lots of family stuff lots of health stuff lots of life stuff has like yeah, I've just made things extra. Um, not even all necessarily a bad thing. Um, just more than usual. I think there's a misconception around chronic illness in general, but specifically fatigue related chronic illnesses where rest and pacing and like recovery is so important to your daily well-being and like to you feeling okay there's a lot of things that you need to do in order to feel okay and rest is really one of them and i think because of that there's like a misconception that it's a really passive illness almost because it's like oh well, i'm just not doing anything it looks really passive it looks like i'm just sat on the sofa all day and like i'm just reading books and like hanging out with my cat and like that's literally all I do for me anyway it's like a constant active pursuit of rest which feels really counterintuitive because rest is supposed is supposed to feel like you're letting go of everything when actually that's not really what it is it's like you're it's like an active rejection instead of letting go and it being like this passive releasing it's like an active rejection of productivity and grind culture it's an active rejection of the idea that you're supposed like you're not worthy unless you're doing things and unless you look like this and unless you're performing in a certain way or and actually it's a really <laughs> it's a really active illness I have to try really hard something that I've only come to really realize recently is that that's what it is like that clashes with what you're actually trying to achieve which is total rest in order to get there, it's a million micro decisions every day. It's a constant active rejection of this voice that tells you that you're lazy and that you're not doing enough and that you need to do more. And all of that takes energy while trying to pursue, while being in the active pursuit of regaining as much energy and, and conserving as much energy as possible. I need to go and sit down my, my legs are. Yeah, they're purple. Hello, little boy. Hello, little boy. You think it's lunchtime because I'm in the kitchen? Not true. Hello, little boy. Chloe. He is literally the light of my life. You're the light of my life. Anyway, I thought I would sit down and actually talk to you guys about what I've been reading because I've actually read some really excellent books so far this year and I thought um, maybe I'd just talk you through some of my favourites that I've read. Well, there's been a couple of duds but that's okay, um, we don't hold it against them. First of all, this is one of the first books I read this year was Lucy by Jamaica Kincaid. I asked for this for Christmas and I wasn't sure what to expect from it I just knew that I wanted to read Jamaica Kincaid I've never read anything by her before and I really wasn't expecting to love it as much as I did I was talking to a couple of people about it I do think the blurb is a bit misleading because it sounds like it's a little bit 
naff or not naff it just doesn't sound like it's as good as it's gonna be um but it's about this young woman lucy who um comes from the west indies to do some nannying in the united states you're kind of following lucy who i think is like 19 as she is figuring out her own life and who she is and what she believes and and she's figuring out the culture shift between home and america and also she's navigating the relationships between the people that she the kids that she's looking after the parents of the kids that she's looking after their friends she's kind of observing society in a way that she hasn't experienced it before back at home it definitely crosses over into the kind of morally gray wom woman and what i love about it is that jamaica kincaid is so unapologetic about making lucy a sometimes unlikable sometimes yeah morally gray or difficult character to love um and she almost gives her permission to say or think things that you would never admit to thinking and like being quite naive but also being quite judgmental and all of these different things it kind of crosses over into being a little bit dark sometimes not really dark but definitely there's some undertones there i love how kincaid doesn't put lucy on a pedestal or just because she's um, a young black woman who is trying to exist in america that means that doesn't mean that she has to be perfect and that she has to be this like ideal like she doesn't have to be this perfect character in order for us to love her um, she's allowed to have bad thoughts just like we all do and that is often a privilege that's only really you know the morally grey woman or the unlikable unhinged woman that's often only really afforded to white female characters because a black character acting in that way especially a black woman is immediately different to a white woman acting in that way and having those thoughts and so I just love like the unapologeticness of it all and it was really short but it really packed a punch so I absolutely loved that and then I also read Kick the Latch by Catherine oh, I'm filming on my phone so I can't google it I know that Hannah really loved it I know I've seen quite a lot about it online but I just wasn't sure because it's about horse riding it's about this woman who's um who works first of all in the stables looking after the horses at the races horse racing in america um which is quite a brutal industry but i've never really been a horse person i've i'm not really i've ne never really been into that world so i thought this maybe is not really my thing because i'm not really into horses so i don't think i'll really get it but oh my god it was incredible and i also didn't realize that it was actually based it's fiction but it's based on a series of interviews that the author did with the person who the character is based off of basically it's a it's a series of really really short chapters it's almost vignette like so it's very readable but it's but also that structure kind of means that it really it's very tense and it's very fraught that world that you're living in it's really atmospheric and you really feel immersed in that world which is very male dominated very sexist misogynist violent harsh world that she feels so at home in but at the same time feels like she's constantly trying like fighting for her place in that world and that um was an incredible thing like atmosphere to achieve in such a short book I listened to So Late in the Day by Claire Keegan. I absolutely love listening to Claire Keegan's novellas or short stories, um, whatever you want to call them. They're usually really, really short and you can listen to them in under an hour, which I just love, like, because I do think you should probably read them or listen to them in one go because they're just so atmospheric. It's like she just picks a single moment, like one day or one pivotal moment in someone's life and just drops you into it and doesn't give you a huge amount of context or just enough and somehow she kind of adds the context in without it feeling like she's giving you loads of backstory you are dropped into this single moment but it doesn't feel jarring and it doesn't feel like too much of an investment it feels like quite low stakes but at the same time there is often this kind of 
tension of like either a missed opportunity or um, a decision that the character has to make or something that they regret in their life and she really just like zeroes in on that feeling and that emotion and that experience and then zeroes back out and then you're just kind of left with this experience that you've just shared with this character and that I think is really unique. I then read the Vladivostok Circus and that was also really great and kind of reminded me of Kick the Lack, um, but it was my first discipline. I've never read anything by her before, but I definitely want to now. I've seen the books everywhere. So again, similar to Kick the Latch in that it really was very tense and kind of created this real atmosphere when you were reading it of like slight claustrophobia and just being in very close proximity to people that you didn't don't really know. A lot of sensory descriptions of like the smells of things and how the lighting felt and like that definitely created a real experience while you were reading it. It's about this woman who, she's a costume designer and she's been brought in essentially to design the costumes and also help kind of design just generally the act of these this trio who are part of the Vladivostok Circus and they are going to perform a really difficult routine and it's kind of history making and she basically comes into this community as an outsider and has to kind of get to know them, break, la break down language barriers, understand the routine, understand their history and, and you know their past and quite some quite painful things that she's not been around to witness but that still yeah provide a lot of context for why these characters are the way that they are it's again like you are also just dropped into this environment and you don't you're finding things out at the same time as she is she writes really incredible observations on friendships and um difficult relationships and just humanness in general and it's like up close, but keeps you at arm's length at the same time, which is, I think, really difficult to do. And I always really appreciate that sort of when an author can hold that balance really well. And then finally, probably one of my top, top, top reads of this year so far was Sunburn. Yeah, this was an absolute five star read for me. And I wasn't really expecting that. I wasn't sure what I was thinking going into it. I kind of thought it would be like a, just a normal average coming of age novel but it was so much more than that. You are reading it from the perspective of the main character called Lucy. It's in the first person. She's a young Irish woman. Um, you start probably when she's around 14 at school and it's, or it really, it's just like peak girlhood. It really goes into like the boring mundanities of being a teenage girl at school with your friends. If you've been a teenage girl at school with your friends, like it's so recognisable, it's so familiar. All of the little like behaviours and the, po and the school politics and the friendships, the fallouts, the way that you feel about your friends and the way that they make you feel and trigger you. And, and that's just on a friendship level, but then basically she kind of catches on a little bit later that she is essentially in love with her best friend Susanna but oh my god it was just so poetic it was so fraught with tension it was so heart-wrenching and like you're really inside the psyche of Lucy and you're really experiencing like really up close the things that she's wrestling with all of these huge overwhelming emotions that like I remember as a teenage girl just feeling everything so incredibly deeply and being so overwhelmed all the time with everything that I was feeling and trying to hold everything in the balance of like what my friends wanted, what my parents wanted from me, what I wanted from me, what the boy I fancied wanted from me, like all of these different competing priorities. The way that Lucy talks about Susanna as the woman that she's in love with is some of the most beautiful writing I've ever come across. Um, and it just absolutely shattered my heart. It really did. And um, I'm gonna buy a physical copy because I listened to it, which I really 100% would recommend that narration is top tier. Some of the best narration I've ever, ever listened to. But yeah, I'm probably gonna leave the vlog here because I just wanna 
upload it and like edit it and actually and not worry too much about it being perfect or anything um, i'm just gonna get it out there before it's the moment's gone um so hopefully you enjoyed this and i hope you're doing okay and um yeah lots of love i'll see you soon <laughs>